Well, hello there, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about how to get every single type of monster part, knowing the difference between carving and capturing a monster, because not all of those methods will give you the same materials. Some of them will give you materials that you can't get from the other. So in order to see this, I'm going to show you the Hunter Notes. I'm going to open up our menu over here, Hunter Notes, Large Monsters. And we're going to look at the Large Monster, the Great Azuchi, everybody's best friend and worst bird wyvern to fight in the game. So to see the difference, we're going to go into our menu over here, go over to our Hunter Notes on the info panel, and we're going to go to Large Monsters. Let's just look at the Great Azuchi, right? We're going to press R, 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 and we're going to go straight to his materials. Now, if we look at these materials, you can see he has a great variety of these materials right over here. The hide, the pelt, the tail, screamer sack, bone, and wyvern tear. But you'll also notice that there are five columns with different percentages. Now, I'm going to explain what each of these columns do and how they work. But first, I'm going to press X to load the high rank version of the Great Azuchi, which you can see drops different monster pods from the low grade or low rank one. So first, I want to talk about that first column, the target rewards. Now, this is when you're doing a quest that has the Great Azuchi as your main target. When you finish that quest, when you've hunted or killed or captured a Great Azuchi, you will be getting these rewards. So this generally includes all of the monster parts that you're able to get from the Great Azuchi for different percentage chances of the odds that you're going to get that. Now, if we look at the capture rewards, now this is a different section that you will get as different different rewards of monster parts at the end of a quest only when you capture a monster and of course this is done by placing a trap on a monster that is at low health and then throwing a tranquilizer bomb or shooting it with tranquilizer ammo to basically capture it and that will basically end the quest right there give you 10 seconds you can't carve it or do anything there's no way to get extra body parts or monster parts from this but you will get certain monster parts instead of others. So for this instance, you can see here, we get the hide at 27%, the pelt at 39%, the tail at 15%. This one is very important, which we'll be talking about later. Now, if we look at the broken part rewards, now these are rewards that you're given if you actually break the parts of the monster by hitting them or attacking them multiple times. These won't actually be the parts that drop on the floor as shinies, just so you know. These will be extra rewards that you will receive alongside your quest rewards and are only obtainable every single time that you break a monster part by hitting it multiple times over and over, which is quite simple. So just try attack a monster in the same place a few times until you break it and then attack another part of the monster to try increase the odds of what rewards you can get. You can see here the Great Izuchi Tail has a very high chance of dropping if you actually break the tail. Though you can also get the Great Azuchi Tail, or any monster tail for that matter, by cutting it off by attacking it with a sharp weapon, like the Longsword, Greatsword, any weapon that is a sharp weapon instead of a blunt weapon like a hammer. That will actually allow you to cut off the tail and then basically carve it right there and then to receive the monster part's tail right there. Now if we go over to that fourth column, you'll see this one is carves. Now this one you can only do right after you kill a monster. You get three chances to carve a monster to get a variety of one of these different parts. You can see that is a 44% chance of being hide, 35% of being pelt, 20% of being the streamer sack. You will not get the tail at all from carving this monster. Now you'll see that you can't carve the great Azuchi tail from the monster after you've killed it. However, if you do capture the monster or even breaking its monster parts, you do have an extra 15% chance of getting a great Azuchi tail. So sometimes, depending on the monster, it might be a better idea to capture it, and other times it will be a better idea to carve it. For example, if you're looking for great Azuchi hide, you have a 44% chance of getting it from carving it, whereas if you capture it, you only have a 25% chance. So this all plays on what type of material from the monster you're trying to farm. I'm going to go into more detail on this for some other monsters because a lot of people think capturing is better than carving, and that's just simply not the case for most monsters in the game. The Great Suzuchi is a poor representation of this because the Great Suzuchi, if you capture it, you actually basically get all the rewards instead of actually carving it. So capturing the Great Suzuchi is actually a better option. But before we get there, I want to talk about the final column, the dropped materials. These are your shinies. These are the items that when you hit a monster a bunch of times, sometimes a shiny item will appear on the ground. And when you pick it up, it has the chance of being one of these materials here, the ones that have a percentage. So it has a 60% chance of being a hide. You can also find these shiny dropped materials either in the area where the monster was for, for a while 
or you can get three of these dropped materials by taking another monster through Wyvern Riding and attacking the Great Azuchi with the large attacks, the A attacks, three times or more to basically make three shiny materials drop on the ground that you can pick up afterwards. And over time, these will slowly reset, so about like 10 minutes after that, you should be able to attack it and make it drop another material. The same goes for all the other monsters in the map. All right, so now I want to talk about a different type of monster over here, right? All right, so now I'm looking at the Tigrex. Now, the Tigrex is the monster I'm going to use for as an example for materials, the difference between capturing and carving. Now, there is a massive difference here. So if we look at the capture rewards, you can see for the Carapace, we have a 34% chance of getting it. Through carving it, we have a 18% chance. So for this material, we would obviously go for the capture method, but this doesn't apply for every single resource. So if we look at the scale, sorry, the scale over here, we can only get a 16% chance of getting this reward by capturing the monster, but we can get a 42% chance by carving it, by killing it at the end of a mission. Now, the reason why I want to talk about why capturing isn't the go-to method for every single hunt that you do is materials like this. The Tigrex Claw right over here, when you capture it, you will never, ever, ever get the Tigrex Claw from capturing a Tigrex. But if you carve it after killing it, you have a 30% chance of getting the claw. So if you're struggling to get this material, stop capturing the Tigrex and kill it instead and then carve it three times in hopes that you get a Tigrex Claw or that you get it as your quest target rewards or you make sure that you break that part of the monster, the claw, so this will be like the hands of the Tigrex, make sure you damage it and break it so that at the end of the quest you have an 80% chance of getting this item. Now the same goes for carving, for example the Tigrex Fang, you have a 27% chance of getting the Tigrex Fang from capturing it, but when you carve it you will never ever ever get the Tigrex Fang from carving the monster. So honestly, you need to really make the decision of how you want to play the game. If you do want to go the capture method, you highly, 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 highly need to do the broken parts rewards because those are the only ways to get some of the materials. Like the claw over here will have an 80% chance to drop as long as you break that part. But however, if you're trying to increase your odds, carving is still the better option for that material. So it all comes down to what materials you're looking for. If you're only needing a claw, I would honestly recommend killing the monster and carving it. If you're only needing the fang, I honestly recommend going to capture Tigrex and just capture him because that's going to give you the highest odds of getting the fang. There's also something else I want to talk about, and this is the information panel that we'll see. So if we actually see a monster and we press A and we go into here, you can see all this information that showed up on the left-hand side there will actually indicate the amounts of the resources that we'll get here. For example, if I look at this Tigrex scale here that has a 30% chance of a crest reward and a 16% chance for capture reward. But if you look at the left here, you see the target reward, the crest reward, will give us one scale. But if we capture it, we'll get two scales. So in essence, it goes from 16% to twice that. So capturing it is actually quite good because you, for that 16%, you get twice the amount that you would get for that 32%. And in terms of those broken parts, you can actually see which part that you need to damage. Like for this one over here, for the scale, for the broken part, we're going to actually have to break a claw to get the scale. And if we go to the claw here, the broken parts, we have to damage a, a claw again, and we'll get two claws. But for example, if I go to the fang, the broken part that we need to break here is the head, obviously. For 60% chance, we can hit the head and get two Tigrex fangs for smashing that face apart nicely. So don't forget to actually come in here and see all the different information that you can see on the left side here because it will paint a huge picture of how to get some of these resources quicker or in the less amount of hunts so that you don't have to do like seven hunts against a Tigrix. You only maybe have to do three or four if you plan them out accordingly. Like, okay, cool, we're going to do two captures and two carves and we're going to get everything we need instead of doing seven captures or seven carves. And that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about for how to get certain monster parts or materials in Monster Hunter Rise. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.